Welcome back guys. So what are we messing around with today? Well, if you remember, you may not remember, it's been a long time, but about six months ago or so, I started messing around with this laundry room. Here's what that looked like. Coming in through here, you can see I've got my beams up. We've got some colors on the wall. Talk to you guys about that here in a little bit, but I've got my beams up and you'll notice they're a lot tighter than they were in the last video. I actually went up, I cut these boards out back here and I crawled up in there because I didn't like that gap and I beat those boards in. I didn't want to caulk it and I didn't like the gap, how big it was in some places, it just bothered me. So I went up there and just persuaded it into its place. So I've got, I think last video on this, I had this one, th these four in the middle and I didn't have this one over here. So I got that one in and then coming over here, I've got this half beam in right here. Still got to veneer these rafters, but we're gonna paint. We actually went with this color. That's what the boss chose. So that's what we're gonna go with. We were gonna wallpaper this whole thing, but we're gonna paint it to get a feel for it. If we don't like this green, it matches the wallpaper, but if we don't like it, we'll change it out. We're gonna put wallpaper on this wall. So I built a platform for this in the last video. I since have taken that out and ripped it down because it was just way too big. So I've still got all the pieces right here. I ripped them down, I, I just turned them into two by fours. I could have made it out of two by fours, but I already had all the pieces cut. And the reason people were wondering why did I even make that platform? Well, when the washer and dryer are sitting here, uh, outlets are still visible and we wanna put a shelf there. So I kind of built this like toe kick platform and we'll reinstall that and that'll elevate it to where you can just have a clean shelf top wallpaper here in the middle as an accent. I'm kind of putting the cart before the horse on a lot of this because I'm gonna replace this window. I'll have to redo some drywall and redo some painting. But we do wanna get a feel for this green color that we just picked up. John actually just went to pick it up from Benjamin Moore. So we're gonna get started on that. So for painting, we just masked off the beams and the ceiling and we just rolled this out. It's a nice green color and it's supposed to match the wallpaper pretty good. This half inch plywood was notched so it would fit around the vent and go right on top of our platform for the appliances. And then I just veneered the face of it with a quarter inch piece of ash that I made on the bandsaw. And this top will get capped with ash. We're actually using solid lumber. The top of the platform will actually be covered with three pieces of eight quarter inch ash. So we use solid lumber for this because the appliances are heavy duty and we didn't want to like bang up some just plywood sheet. And we got the right height that we needed. So you can see them back there on the platform. It worked out really well. So here I'm laying out the tile. This is actually my first time to do tile on a floor. I did one backsplash before this. And I gotta admit, this stuff is pretty intimidating, but once I kinda got the hang of it, it wasn't too bad. So I intentionally am not using spacers here. I'm not gonna grout this. It's actually a groutless install, and I'm not using any leveling system either because I wanted this to have like a cobblestone kind of effect to it where it had some texture and it wasn't completely even. Trust me, everything you see in this house is probably not gonna be a lot of people's taste, but we definitely like it. It's a pink floor. Yes, it is pink. It matches a piece of the wallpaper as well. The whole style of this room is kind of based off this wallpaper. So that's where we got the inspiration from. So yes, she made me put in wallpaper, not only wallpaper, but an accent wall wallpaper. But we actually have a really cool idea for this. This is going to be like a backdrop for a built-in cabinet. That's going to be a backless cabinet. So you'll see this behind it and it's gonna be like a curiosity cabinet style setup. And we may finish it off with some glass doors or just leave it as an open shelf concept. We'll know more as we see this thing kind of come together. But I think it's gonna be really cool. I'm gonna add some you know, unique woodworking features to it as far as design. So I think when it's all said and done, it's gonna be pretty awesome. So now that you're caught up to speed on what's going on in there, let me tell you about what we're doing today. Here's my dilemma. I did that ceiling that you just seen and I liked it for a couple of days, maybe a week or so, but every time I walked through there, I just kept being irritated by it. I was just like, what? Why don't I like this? Like, I, I thought it was going to be cool, but I just, I don't like it now. So here's what I've come up with in my mind. It just looks too fake. It looks like a movie prop. It honestly does. Let's go take a look at it and I'll show you what I'm talking about. 
Here's the ceiling. Here's what's going on here. We've got the Southern Yellow Pine ship lap boards. They've got a little bit of a rustic look with these knots. And then I've got these ash beams going across. And these are 24 inches on center. This framing right here is actually real. This is a veneer wrapped rafter that's 24 on center. And I was like, hey, let's just screw into that and make this look like a cool, like it's framed in ash or whatever. Sounded cool at the time, but now I'm just not feeling it. I think what I, what I don't like about this more than anything, it just looks kind of dirty. And it just, I was going for that whitewash look and like kind of vintage look, but I'm just not into it. So we're gonna spray this white. And you can see we've already got some of the caulking done around these veneers. So yeah, that's kind of where we're at with this whole thing. And the first step in turning the ceiling white is priming it. So that's what we're gonna do. This mask right here, these things are expensive. Last time I bought one of these, it was 80 bucks. I just got this one, they have gone up to 120. I, I gotta have it though, there's no way around it. So we're gonna shoot it with this bin shellac like I always do. Absolutely love that stuff. Dries quick, easy to sand, all that good stuff. And then we're gonna shoot the top coat with this Promar ceiling paint. This is just gonna be flat. Typically we don't do trim flat because you know if you touch trim it scuffs up really bad so we're using satin and stuff like that but since this technically is trim and we're shooting it flat it's because it's a ceiling it's not going to get any traffic nobody's going to touch it so with that that's our setup for today so i've never actually used one of these so we're going to give it a shot and i see how this would be useful because I'm always having to clean my face mask from overspray. Whereas with this thing, because I'm gonna be looking up at a ceiling, I'm definitely gonna have some snowfall on me. So when I'm done with this, there's a little tab right there. Just peel it off. What will they think of next? So we got our primer loaded up, we got our ceiling ready for spraying. So you're gonna see a good before and after here going from a washed out look to pure white. Let's do it. I think we made the right decision. I was spraying that stuff. And man, I was worried about it because that wasn't the intention of that ceiling. When I seen that primer start covering that ash, you could still see all the wood grain of the ash. I don't know if that's how it's gonna look when it dries, but as I was doing it, I was like, this is looks so much better. So we're gonna let that air out, let that dry. I think that's the only coat of primer I'm gonna need because it's gonna be white on white. I'll clean the sprayer and we'll take you guys in there and we'll check it out. Come check this out. So here's what we got, pure white on that ceiling now from that primer. And guys, look at the grain in this right here. Like, look at that. Because we sprayed it, we still get that really nice grain look to it. So this still has like a custom effect, but it actually looks like just old framing. Like this ceiling, this is the subfloor of the second floor. It, it just kind of gives you that whole vibe and that whole feeling, but it still has that kind of rough look to it like you can still see the southern yellow pine you know knots and stuff like that coming through but I think it was a good decision I'm so glad we made this decision to do this as soon as I sprayed that first uh, beam in here I was like well there's no going back now then when I saw all that grain come to life I was like oh yeah that looks freaking sweet so yeah everything came out good our um, our rafters too that we've veneered wrapped with the ash those look freaking sweet too like those look they look like a big beam right there but they're actually a quarter inch veneer of ash so it's this is awesome this is like you battle something you you have a way you want it to look it may not work out and then you just change it up so we gotta spray this with the flat and I think we'll be in business with this one. We can finally wrap it up. So the paint is finally dried. Not much more of a difference than you just seen with the primer, but come check this out. It is more of a flat look, obviously, because it's flat paint. 
that bin primer has a little bit of a sheen to it. So, you know, this is the actual flat look. What I noticed about that coat of paint, this is one coat of paint on top of that primer. But what I noticed about it, it filled in the grains a little bit more, but they're still there. So I'm not, I'm not really worried about it. It still has like, you can tell it's a natural wood look just painted over. So with that final coat of paint, this thing's done and I'm extremely happy with it. So what we need to do now is tear all this plastic down, clean the sprayer, and then move on to the next thing, which I think is going to be opening up that door, building another door there, building this door, tearing this window out, making a new window here. I don't know. We got a lot of options basically, but that's going to do it for the journey today. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know if you guys have any questions, comments, tips, leave that all down below. Other than that, we'll see you guys on the next one.